question again. Who is not familiar with the Maccabees? You, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, okay. All right, so everybody else sits. All right, I'm gonna deal with that back row back there. Ah, uh, that's Zakai, Zeph, and Josiah. I'm an unlearned dumb Christian. My name is Sam Bokun. <laughs> and I say, outside of the Apocrypha, there's no mention of the feast called Hanukkah, the feast of dedication. Where would you go? Two hands went up, two out of three went up. Come on, Josiah, I'm calling on you. Where would you go? See, y'all, what y'all gotta realize about me? I'm looking for the hand that don't go up. <laughs> Where would you go, Josiah? Sambo Kuhn, Christian, the Christian Sambo Kuhn just said, you a lie. There's no such holiday as that. I know, I know the scripture, I don't know where it is exactly. It's when um, Christ kept the feast. Well, is that for my help? Um, John 10, 22. Let's go to John 10, 22. <coughs> These are the scriptures you want to keep in mind. Because a Christian who has got to be the most unlearned and dumbest creature upon the earth will love to criticize because he has exalted the white man in his mind. And the white man has told him Christmas is the thing. Come on. The book of St. John, chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Mm, the word Hanukkah, Zakai, means what? <coughs> you don't know what it means. Hmm. People always say it, Hanukkah. What does it mean? Get a lie. Dedication. It means dedication. Write that down. It means dedication. So read that again, y'all, sir. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Let this let you know that the feast of dedication is observed in what season, yeah. Leon? It's observed in the winter time. It's observed in the winter time. There's no such thing as Christmas. You challenge a dumb Christian. Because they stupid as hell, believe me. They don't know nothing. <laughs> this is the only winter holiday recorded in the Bible. Ask them to show me Christmas. Show, read the next verse. Let's see if Christ observed this thing. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. So why did he walk into the temple? <laughs> to observe the feast. That's what Christ kept. There was never, Christ never kept nothing called Christmas. Okay. Hmm. Okay, back to that last row back there. Where else could you go to explain the Feast of Dedication? Oh, Zephaniah. Where's Matthew's four? Okay, Out, other than the Apocrypha. Although the Apocrypha, because Sambo Kun Christian, he's saying. The Apocrypha, I don't know nothing about it. Y'all got to be able to roll even... That's what I say. You know what I'm trying to say? What am I trying to say? Be able to cut up a simple Christian no matter what book they go to. Exactly. What part of the Bible. I so you went to the New Testament, you just right. shut them down. Now he still want to argue. He or she still want to argue. Where else could you go? Barnabas. Daniel 8 and 8. Hmm. Daniel 8. Let me look at before I say no. Let me look at it first. No. <laughs> I love saying that word. No. <laughs> what else? Shut up. Help us. I was gonna deal with the word Greeks. Uh, how I, I don't know the answer for another where it says the feast of the case. I don't know that, but I could bring them to Daniel 11 where it refers to the Greeks, and you don't have anything but the Greeks. Okay, to that. this one we're doing. I'll go back to Barnabas. Because Barnabas, the answer was good, but the verse you hit was not on point. I said, 9 8 to 11. Down to 11. Down to 11? Yes. No, you guess No. But your chapter's correct. His chapter, Daniel 8, is correct, but his verse was wrong. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take us through Daniel 8, 
And I'm gonna go through it relatively quickly for tonight. And maybe on a Sabbath we'll go through it slow. Let's start with verse 20 and 21. Then I'm gonna jump up. I need you to write this down. Daniel 8, 20 and 21. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 8 and verse 21. 20. 20, sorry. The ram which thou sawest having two horns are the kings of Media and Persia. So the first thing you want to write down is ram equals Media and Persia in your notes. Next verse. And the rough goat is the king of Grecia. You want to write rough goat equals king of Greece. Go ahead. And the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Who was the first king of Greece? Get a liar. The first king of Greece that unified all Edom. Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. So that's what you want to write down. The, the horn between his eyes equals Alexander the Great. Okay? So now you might be asking yourself, self, what does this have to do with Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication? It has everything to do with it. Let's start at verse 3 in the same chapter. Right done, you read. Daniel 8 verse 3. Now this is a vision the prophet Daniel saw. Come on. Then I lifted up mine eyes and saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns. What does the ram represent, Isaac? Media and Persia. Media and Persia. Go ahead. And the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. Which horn was the highest of the two horns and came up last, Isaac? Oh, Persia. Persia. Those are the East Indians. Understand that. The Medes. Medes. Come on. Medes, that's uh, Japheth. The seed of Japheth. What you call Polynesians and the Hawaiians today. Go ahead. I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beasts might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand. But he did according to his will and became great. So this guy became great. Come on. And as I was considering, behold, and he go came from the west on the face of the whole earth. So now Daniel saw this rock, this ram. This ram was busting everybody down, conquering. Then he said, wait a minute, now I see a goat. A he goat coming. Come on. And tut <clears throat> And I was as I was considering, behold, and he goat came forth, came from the west on the face of the whole earth. And touched not the ground. Touched not the ground, because then he, he knew a spirit was with this, the Greeks. Because what does the goat represent? Josiah? Represents uh, the king of Greece. The Greeks. The Greeks. The, the, are you taking notes? Okay, come on. And the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. What does the notable horn represent, Phil? Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. The Greek. Go ahead. And he, became, and he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. Now he sees this go run towards the ram in the fury of power. Go ahead. And I saw him come close unto the ram, and he was moved with col chola. Cola. 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 Right. Cola. That okay. means extreme hatred. Go ahead. And smote the ram and break his two horns. And he broke the two horns. What does that represent, Liam? Um, Media and Persian. He smashed the Persian and Mede Empire. Go ahead. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him. The ram, the Medes and Persians had no more power to stand before the Greeks. This is history that Daniel's explaining. You can't go over this with a Christian. He's dumb as hell. He don't know no history. Go ahead. But he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him. And he stamped upon the Persian Empire, the Mede Empire. Go ahead. And there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Nobody could help the Persians in Mede from the white man, because the Greeks was the white man. Go ahead. Therefore the ego waxed very great. The white man waxed great under the Greeks. Go ahead. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. And when he got strong to the zenith of power, that horn. What happened with that horn? Seth. He died. He died. He died. 
of syphilis. That's the history of Alexander. Go ahead. Therefore, the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. The great horn was broken. Alexander the Great died in 333 BC. Write that down. He died of a bad case of syphilis. He died in 32. What? He died. He was age 20. He died 32. Right. Go ahead. And for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Out of Alexander came up four notable ones. Who can name them? Lysimachus. Lysimachus. Mm -hmm. um, you have Ptolemy. Ptolemy. And you had Cassandra. And Cassandra. What did Lysimachus have? Um, Lysimachus had. Um... Anybody know what Lysimachus is? Lysimachus. 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 <laughs> what do you have? Nobody took notes two weeks ago? Last was year. Last year this time? Thrace. Okay. What did Ptolemy have? Egypt. He had Egypt. What's the other guy? Cassandra. Cassandra. What did he have? Cassandra had um slip on my just slip on Syria. Syria. Was it Syria? Who <laughs> mm. what do you have? Yeah, what do you have? Macedonia. Macedonia. Seleucus was Syria. Right. Now, what verse are we at? We are in verse... Eight, nine. Eight, We're in nine. verse nine. Yes. Verse nine. And out of, out of one of them came... Out of one of those four generals... Go ahead. ...came forth a little horn. Which was Antiochus Epiphanes. Write that down. Little horn equals Antiochus Epiphanes. Come on. Which wax exceeding great. Huh? What does what does epiphanies mean? Barnabas. Epiphanies. Antiochus surname Epiphanes. Because that's what it says in the history. What does epiphanies mean? Phil. God manifest on earth. Write that down. That's correct. God manifest on earth. Exactly. Read on. Um, and out of one of them came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south and toward the east and toward the pleasant land. And towards the pleasant land. The pleasant land is Jerusalem, right? And it waxed great even to the host of heaven. Uh -huh. And it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. So those stars represented who, Josiah? <coughs> Those stars that were cast down represented who? Who did Antiochus cast down? The other generals? No, Zechariah. Israel. Who of Israel? Um, the southern kingdom. The southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. We know? Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host. Mm -hmm. And right. by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. And by him the daily sacrifice was taken away. Go ahead. And the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And his sanctuary was cast down. That's what we're going to read about tonight. Go ahead. And then the host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. Write this down. The host that was given to him were certain wicked Israelites. We're going to read about that tonight. Come on. And then the host was given him against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression. By reason of transgression meaning by reason of sin because they were wicked as hell. And it cast down the truth to the ground. And it cast down this horn, this notable one, Antiochus Epiphanes, this Greek, cast the truth to the ground. Got rid of the Bible. Got rid of the scriptures. Go ahead. And it practiced and prospered. And it practiced that thing. And it prospered in evil. He prospered in evil. Come on. Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto that certain saint which spake, how long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice? How long shall this be that the daily sacrifice is taken away? Go ahead. In the transgression of desolation, to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot. Because the Israelites were trodden under the foot of the Greeks. Go ahead. And he said to me, unto two thousand... Listen good to this. Unto two thousand... Unto two... How long is this going to be? One saint answered the other in Daniel's vision. In vision. He said unto what? 
2,300 mm -hmm. days. Unto 2,300 days. Go ahead. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. That's when the Maccabees cleanse the temple. Okay. From there, go to Daniel 11 and verse 32. Daniel 11, verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall be corrupt by flatteries. Right. Those are those wicked Israelites that were corrupted by flatteries of the Greeks. Right? But the people that do know their God shall But the people that do know their God, come on. Shall be strong and do exploits. Shall be strong and do exploits. Write this down. That verse deals with Mattathias. Okay? And his friends, the Israelites, that were with him. Go ahead. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many in the Lord. Go ahead. Yet they shall fall by the sword. Yet they shall fall by the sword. <coughs> they shall die. Go ahead. And by flame. And by, by flame. By captivity. Captivity. And by spoil. And by spoil. Many days. Because the Greeks was hard on the Israelites. Come on. Now when they shall fall, they shall be hoping with a little help. The little help? was Judah Maccabees, the son of Mattathias. That's the little help that they got. Go ahead. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. And many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Go ahead. Was that it? I just went down to uh, 35. That next verse. That would, okay. And, and some of them of understanding shall fall. And some of them of understanding shall fall. To try them. To try them. And See that when people fall, it's not always for a bad thing. It's to try the rest of the people. Who shall stand for me? When you read this history, you're going to find out after Judah fell, Judah Maccabee fell with his brothers, Israel had to look around who's going to stand up next. Because when Judah fell, who came after Judah? Jonathan. Jonathan. He went, the people was like, yo, we need somebody to lead this thing. We're going to read all that tonight. Was that it? No. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white. Right. So when things happen, in the body even. Like Paul said in Romans 15, 4. The things which were written aforetime was what? Written for our learning. Written for our learning. That we through what? Patience. Patience and what? Comfort. Comfort of the scriptures might what? Have hope. Have hope. So this history is meant for us. These things will always happen in the bodies of Israel. Throughout the camps. Men will rise. Men will fall. But it's not necessarily. It's not for a bad thing. Just read that verse again, what you just read. Listen good to what he's saying. And some of them of understanding shall fall to try them. To try them. And to purge. And to purge them. And to make them white. And to make them white, meaning make them pure in spirit. Was that it? No. Even to the time of the end. Even to the time of the end. Because it is yet for a time appointed. Okay, so that vision, this vision that Daniel saw about the cleansing of the temple, about the Greeks rising up in power. Notice how the Bible jumps. Okay? It goes from what? The book of Malachi to what? Matthew. Matthew. To Matthew. What's missing? Who's ruling in the book of Malachi? What empire? Um, the Persians. The Persians. Persian lead empire. Who's ruling the, in Matthew? The Romans. the Romans. What history is missing? The Greeks. The Greeks. So a dumb, see, a dumb Christian don't know that. <laughs> Daniel prophesied about it. But you need the books called the Apocrypha to get the detailed history. Mm -hmm. First Maccabees, chapter 1. Uh, I don't, yeah, let's start at verse 1. First Maccabees 1, verse 1. And it happened. After that, Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kedah, had smitten Darius, the king of the Persians, and Medes. Now, what we just read there, where did we just read that at? Daniel chapter 8. Okay, now we're reading it in detail. This shows you, that's why prior to the late 1700s, the Apocrypha was all always included in the Bible. It wasn't until the Protestant whites came in power that they removed it. Protesting. Right, the protesting whites. That's where the word Protestant comes from. They were protesting <coughs> against the um, Catholics. Come on. Um, and it happened after that Alexander, son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came out of the land of Kedem, had smitten Darius, king of the Persians, and Medes, that he reigned in his stead the first 
over Greece. And it's telling you that Alexander was the first king over Greece. The first king. That's why in Daniel it said a notable horn was between the eyes of that he goat. It also said in Daniel that the first king, Right. it mentioned that. And it said that, what did it say in Daniel? Let's get that. 821. 821. 821, because it, it's, it's saying exactly what we just read here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it. Daniel 8, verse 21. And a rough goat is the king of Grecia, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. Is the first king. Mm -hmm. So what you just read out of the Apocrypha, what did it say over there, I thought? The first over Greece. The first over Greece. And it named them. That's why they had to get that history out of the wreck. That's why they had to get it out. Because it's talking about them. When they, when they don't teach you the history, they make they make you believe that the Bible is a fairy tale. Mm -hmm. They make you think that it's about Shazam and when. <laughs> <laughs> no. The Bible is about facts. History. Exactly. Continue, First Maccabees chapter 1. Verse 2. It made many wars and won many strongholds, and slew the kings of the earth. And slew the kings of the earth. Go ahead. And he went through to the ends of the earth, and took spoils of many nations, in so much that the earth was quiet before him. When it says in so much that the earth was quiet before him, it means he conquered all the dark nations. He conquered everybody. Go ahead. Whereupon he was exalted, and his heart was lifted up. Come on. And he gathered a mighty strong host, and ruled over countries and nations and kings who became tributaries unto him. Everybody had to pay Alexander taxes, right? And after these things, he fell sick. He got syphilis. And perceived that he should die. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he called his servants such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and part of his kingdom among them while he was yet alive. Notice it says, um, wherefore, he called his servants such as were honorable and had been brought up with him from his youth and parted his kingdom among them while he was alive. That goes back to Daniel 8. What did we read? What verse was it? Mm. Bear with me a second. 8 and 8? Right. It says, Therefore the he goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great, he, the great horn was broken, and for it came up four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. Those were his four major generals that was raised up with him. That's why I said notable. Right. Okay. It's saying notable because you can read about these four guys in history. That's right. Antio, or not Antio, excuse me, Seleucus, Cassandra, Ptolemy, uh, who's the other guy? Lysimachus, the guy, the L guy. Lysimachus. <laughs> Come on. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. And his servants bear rule everyone in his place. And after this, after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves. So did their sons after them many years. And evils, and evils were multiplied in the earth. That's letting you know why the white man had to take this out of the Bible. This is letting you know why they took this out of the school system too. Because they taught dumb blacks and Latinos that civilization started with the Greeks. But God says evils were multiplied when the white man came in power. That's what God says. Get scared and call your mama. Go ahead. Now something. Yeah. <clears throat> I had to. I had to run out and get this. Uh, this is a passage from Josephus. Josephus was a first-century historian during the time of uh, of the Greeks and the Romans. Romans. Of, of the Romans, <clears throat> and he recorded some information about the Greeks. And uh, we were reading about what was that passage that I that y'all read before I went out. It was about the Greeks. Uh, and I'm going to read a piece of it to show you how these people were. Uh, it says, and they were the Greeks. What, so just Josephus? Yeah. yeah. That page is uh, it's on page 30. This is, this is called the complete works of Flavius Jose uh, Josephus. Flavius Josephus. Huh? And I'm in the book of, uh, I'm on page 30, chapter 5. And it's like the bottom part of that paragraph. It says that they were the Greeks who became authors of such mutations, for when in after ages they grew potent, 
They claim to themselves the glory of antiquity, giving names to the nations that sounded well in Greek, because they changed the names of the people. Uh, that they might sound, that they might be better understood among themselves, and setting agreeable forms of government over them, as if they were a people derived from themselves. <laughs> read, read, read that again. I, I want them to understand exactly what Josephus is saying about the Greeks. Read that thing again. <laughs> and they were the Greeks who became the authors of such mutations. For when in after ages they grew potent, they grew powerful upon the earth, they claimed to themselves the glory of antiquity. Meaning anything great that happened prior to them, guess what the Greeks said? That was me. That was me. That was us. That was our people. That's why when you look at America does the same thing. When you look at ancient Egypt, who does America show? White people. They show movies about ancient Babylon. What does America show? White people. Prince of Persia. White people. Prince of Persia. White people. Right. The reason why I ran to get this is because of what you said, Josiah. You was making the point that they tried to make people believe that everything great began with them. That's what prompted me to go outside and grab this. So that's why Josephus is saying what he's saying. He said, they claimed to themselves the glory of antiquity. Like antiquity belonged to them. Uh, in the ancient history. Right, that's what he's saying. Yeah, and then there's also something in there that tell you that the people that they tell you that the people that set up. It's the same the same philosophy America had today. <coughs> Whatever place they go, there are people that set up, either they they've been in the school in America or they're down with the government of America. It's the same thing the Greek do they're doing today. They go to Haiti, set a Haitian guy, the Haitian guy down with him. You understand? They go to Era, send uh, 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 one of the Iraqi. He down. He come from the school up here. He set that thing up just like his forefathers. Right. See, the, the reason why I'm saying this is because, like, I'm going back to your point, Josiah. They've been they made the point that civilization began with them and all of that. Well, if you just look at Persia, Persia was before the Greeks. Mm -hmm. They had civilization. Mm -hmm. Okay, they had, they had civilization. I ain't even talking about Israel. I'm just talking about an empire that was before them. Okay, so I'm gonna finish this. And Alexander bought their fashion too. Right. When they conquered, he bought their fashion, how they built their own temples. He would have copied it. When you talk about Persian rugs, that ain't got nothing to do with the Greeks. Nope. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Listen good to this. Is that they claim to themselves the glory of antiquity, giving names to the nations that sounded well in Greek. That's why when a white man conquered, they always put names they choose, like Africa. Right. That's the white man's name. Egypt. Right. Egypt. Right. Ethiopia. Right. Ethiopia, exactly. Guess what? China. Mm -hmm. That's the white man's name. All of these names, are, it tells you why they did it. Mm -hmm. That they might be better understood among themselves. You see that? They didn't care if you understood it, as long as their people understood it. <laughs> That's why any, when you read these a lot of old books, any black person, they call them all they're Ethiopian. Mm -hmm. Burnt face. Right, burnt face. Right. That's, that's what, what, that's what Ethiopian. Right. Right. Okay, burnt face. And setting agreeable forms of government over them as if they were a people derived from themselves. Right, so democracy and all that foolishness started with the Greeks, the Senates and all that. That was them. That's it. Okay. When you brothers and sisters are home, Read chapter 1 through 4 during this season, this holiday, okay? But since we're in class, I have limited time, so I'm just jumping to key points. Uh, there's a, a book, um, Babylon of Timbuktu. Um, this goes into what happened to us in Spain, because the same thing that happened to us amongst the Greeks and the Romans, the Spaniards are the same people. They did the exact same thing. It's on page 128 of Babylon of Timbuktu. It says, in the year 1547, the papal office authorized the establishment of the system of the Inquisition in Portugal. The word Inquisition means inquiry or investigation, meaning those who didn't follow Christianity or Catholicism, they were either tortured or killed or enslaved. It says, um, the Inquisition consisted of a tribunal of religious judges. Its purpose was to investigate and purge out heretical Christians, persons who questioned certain Christian principles. So if you question it, you got put to death or locked up. Um, although some white Portuguese Christians suffered at the hands of the Inquisition, 
This system was mainly directed against the new Christians, the secret black Jews. They were called secret because they were keeping Judaism in secret. They were acting like Christians, they weren't really Christians. So that this doctrine or this inquisition was directly set against set up against the Jews in Spain. Same thing here. It was against all nations to follow, but it was directed against Israel to forget the laws. The same thing. You found it? Yep. Come on. It's page 90 in the same book. Babylon Tim from Babylon to Timbuktu by Rudolf R. Windsor. The black Jews, they say black because Negro reading, I think, is talking about white people. So you go black there on purpose. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. Mm. Because he ran, he fled into Africa from Roman persecution. The black Jews had an advantage over the African tribes. They carried their culture, history, laws, and written records with them. So when we was in Africa, we was not booga 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 booga. <laughs> we had laws and records with us. It's like no difference. White man came to Africa, he knew the Jews were who the Africans were. Exactly. They, right. He was smart and they were dumb as hell. <laughs> this assured them a constant precedent for the development of a higher social organization. Because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, let me that again. Because of the stability of the black Jewish culture, the Jews were not absorbed into the monotonous, meaning the original, population. In fact, the Jews absorbed some of the native tribes. They want to follow us. The Jews made use of every opportunity. They were an industrious and skillful people. In the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes. In, in Ghana, you had Israelites that was living in Ghana. West Coast. The West Coast. Right. In the Jewish Ghanaian states were found kings, princes, governors, generals, secretaries, treasurers, revenue agents, that's tax collectors, judges, architects, engineers, doctors, historians, language interpreters, mathematicians, jewelers, sculptors, masons, carpenters, painters of art, goldsmiths, leather workers, potters, armorers, saddlers, blacksmiths, agriculturalists, etc. I so we that's what we was doing when we was in Africa. Mm -hmm. Okay. Also, this goes back to our same before. The nations knew this, primarily the white man, and said what they did. It says another in another example, the persecution of the black Jews in Portugal was so ruthless and frequent that Cecil Rock tells us the Jews did not divulge to their children the secret of their religion until they had attained the age of reason. Mm. The, he the Hebrew religion is such that if you deny your religion, you will eventually deny your nationality. Wow. So let me read that again. Right. Read that again. This is what happened to the Negro. That's right. That's what he's saying. This is good. <laughs> read from top. In another example, the persecution of the black Jews in Portugal was so ruthless. Wait, and where were we? In Portugal. That's in Portugal. Europeans. Quite, wait, whoa, whoa. So yeah, yeah, you had to read that because a lot of them think we was only in Africa. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. We were the Moors that you read about in history mm -hmm. that was ruling all of Europe. Mm -hmm. The Dark Ages, that, that was us. That's why we were in Portugal. Exactly, because that's what that's coming out of. You, the question is, how did they get there? I told you you Those were the Israelites that were ruling Spain. So when they had that battle at Constantinople in Rome, when the Borgias family came, where that fake image of Christ came out, that white image, that was the time period where they expelled, where they expelled us out of Spain and pushed us into Portugal. I'll show you where we can. Oh, man, we gotta start bringing these records I'll, in. I'll show them. I'll show them right because here. it tells you that the first, the first shipload of slaves came to, you know the book, mm -hmm. came to America, not from Africa, came from Spain. That's mm -hmm. right. And I'll show you. That's what's the name of that book is it's, Before it, the Mayflower. Before the Mayflower by, jo Le by Leonard. Leonard, by Jerome, what's his name? Leonard. Lerone Bennett. Lerone Bennett. Bennett. That's right. Lerone Bennett. It's a book right here. It's called The Moorish Empire. It's a topic, page 109. At this time, in the land of Spain, the black Jews were persecuted and many had fled to Morocco for refuge. Mm. As a result of this persecution... We fled where? To Morocco. <laughs> to Morocco. Let's go again. For refuge. As a result of this persecution, the Jews of Morocco and the Moors planned to invade Spain with the assistance of the Spanish Jews. Um, jump down. The first one to set foot on the soil of Spain was General Tarif a Jew of the tribe of Simeon, mm. after whom the island of Tarifa opposite Changiers was named. So he set foot on it and started conquering it from there. Mm. So I'll go back. That's he was Simeon. Uh, the Hebrew religion is such that... Page what? Page, oh, page 123 now. I was page... 
That was page 109. Let me make sure that was it. Page 109, yes. Page 109. I'll go back. Now you're going to 123. Yeah. The Hebrew religion is such that if you deny your religion, you will eventually deny your nationality. That's because it was one and the same. That's right. right. It was one and the same. <laughs> Right. The soci let's, let's go to Psalms 83. The sociologists and psychologists know, and history has proven that if you deny your culture and nationality over a long period of time, you will totally forget it through a process of assimilation. Mm -hmm. You know why that's important? Mm -hmm. If y'all see that movie Roots, when they hung up Kunta Kinte, and he said, I got a name, and I'm going to give it to you, and you're going to like it. Your name is Toby, now say it. He said, Kunta, whooped his back. Kept whooping him till he said, ah, Toby, whooped it out of him. That's what they did with all our ancestors. Whoop, changed our name, changed everything, so we would deny our history, our culture, everything. That's what they did to us. Because we realize how important our name is. You understand? That's the reason why it was so hard for him to let it go. See, today we let the hell with it. We don't we don't see that we don't see the importance in hanging on to what we are. That's what we call our children Sambo Coon. <laughs> you understand? That's the that is the point. You gotta like what you was reading earlier about the uh the the, the part about they will eventually lose out. What was that piece you just read out of there? I thought um, if you deny your religion, you will eventually deny your nationality. When somebody come and asks you what's your religion, they're really asking you in the sense, who are you? Mm -hmm. Because it's no, it's no such thing as I was a Hebrew, I was an Israelite, I was, and, right. and I'm not no more. <laughs> you stupid as hell. Exactly. You're the Israelites that the Bible speaks of regardless of what you act like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Amen.